Hello and welcome. Um, I tried to do a live video on Facebook, but it didn't seem like anybody was um, there. <laughs> and I've been having some problems with doing Facebook Live. So I just decided to record this video and, and um, then I'll post it on my various platforms. It's mostly, I spend a lot of time taking notes and actually reflecting back on my notes from 2019 and 2020. And I, I uncovered a lot of really um, interesting things. But what I'm gonna share with you is a culmination of um, information that I have on the energy and kind of taking you on the journey backwards and then um, to this point what what we went through or you know how we got to where we are here now so we're talking about the full moon in cancer it's at 16 degrees of cancer and it, i may if i have time um read that placement from the inside degrees whoops but we're going to start with um talking about the um energy of cancer Cancer is the, is nurturing. It's the nurturer, the protector, the mother energy. And it's um, also the awareness that there's something that's um, fragile and possibly insecure and, and needs to be protected within. Um, and I'm talking emotional needs that um, need to be met, most likely unmet needs from childhood on up that um, we need to meet ourselves and they need to be also met by um, those that we are in relationship with. So the it, this is also the energy, um, cancer is the energy, like I said, of the mother, the divine mother either, even, and um, the mother and her influence on us. And this is, goes gen from generation to generation. And the influence that's been placed on us through the mother's um, energy, womb, her upbringing. And, um, you know, how we identify with that aspect of ourselves. So the full moon in Cancer, as I'm doing this, I'm on the east coast of the United States. So it was at 6.07 p.m. here. Um, full moons are always opposite the sun, the sun in Capricorn. So we are, um, the way I see it, uh, the, we are coming to a completion point from the Cancer Capricorn eclipses from the end of 2019, December 2019 and January 2020. Full moons are a completion, um, the completion cycle, either of a lunar cycle, but then there can be bigger cycles um, and eclipse cycles. And I'm really reading this energy as taking all of that time and we're closing a cycle. So full moons are a completion or they're bringing things to fulfillment or we're, basic, or we're basically taking something as far as it can go. Full moons also bring illumination to um, just things that we didn't see, things we didn't realize before that now we're like, oh, I, I you know, had no idea. We're also, we've gone through a lot and started to really get in touch with our feelings, our emotions more in the last two or three years. Um, this full moon is in Cancer and Cancer is the ruler of the moon. So the moon is in its, the moon is at home now. Um, the moon rules over our emotions as well as our intuition and the very depth of our soul and our needs, our human, basic human needs and our emotional needs. More so the emotional needs with the moon. Cancer is the energy of the mother, the divine mother, and it's the energy of the womb or giving birth to something new. And it's also highlighting self-care, nurturing, and also our nourishment. So with the sun in Capricorn, 
and we find ourselves at this Cancer Capricorn axis. Capricorn representing the structure, the foundations of our physical reality. So we can use this energy to really ground in and nurture something into our reality, something new into our reality. But I'm going to go backwards for a bit because we are still reprogramming from 2020 here. Um, so going backward for a bit, just to recognize how we got to where we are now, reflect on the time period from January to April of 2020. You can even go back to um, the Capricorn solar eclipse was December 26th of 2019. And then the Cancer lunar eclipse was January 10th, 2020. So a few, two weeks later. Um, at this point in time, we began the Saturn-Pluto conjunction influence that really um, did a number on us <laughs> through 2020. And also Jupiter was in the mix on that too. So it was expanded. It was a lot. Um, and this was in Capricorn, which is uh, more rare. It's like between 30 and 30, every 30, 35 years or so we have this this um aspect and all that energy was about us coming to realize many things in the structure of our lives which is the saturn capricorn energy and um that we're working against the, the stuff that was working against us um things that we haven't hadn't liked for many years but just felt like we had to do um things that we knew we needed to change pluto uh, transformation and that's things we needed to change in a big expansive way Jupiter um, in order to overcome to release ourselves free ourselves from um, things that were just holding us down holding us back making us tired making us just robotic even uh, so we can actually move into a new better different experience in life here so from January of 2020 all the way to April of 2022 during that new moon solar eclipse in Taurus, which we're now in the um, Scorpio Taurus lunar axis, uh, we began to really release old, um, old baggage, old stuff and experiment with some new things that really kind of helped us with the building blocks and the next stepping stone into a new experience in life. Even though by April of this, just this past year of 2022, we probably stepped out of some hard times for ourselves. We still found ourselves not exactly where we wanted to be in our life experience here. There was more to learn about ourselves and our journey. So we, we may have tried to do more, and um, tried to get a better life experience and really ran into more obstacles, more challenges, um, especially at that lunar eclipse in Scorpio, which I, I want to go back and read the Scorpio energy from 2020 because that's extremely relevant to right now. Um, but let me just finish where I was at here. Um, realizing that these blocks were due to us trying to do more things in the old way um the old standards what was familiar what had worked in the past just doesn't work wasn't what hasn't been working it's not working it's not going to work um now or going forward our perspective on life our standards really have to change um internal changes that we then have to fully embody going forward and a lot of these are emotional um we also needed to slow down and um because we still didn't truly fully um embody or know ourselves in this new way that we wanted to this new life we wanted to move into um and we're taking a deeper inventory on ourselves on our lives to discover truly what uh, what's important to us? What are our core values? And this comes up in many of the readings lately too. Um, 
and also to heal old traumas, old wounds that we've carried throughout our lifetime. The main thing I see that um, with this moon tonight, this moon in Cancer, it's, it's helping us to understand more about what our soul's needs are, and what needs were unmet as a child, um, and then growing up, and then finally honoring those needs, especially the emotional needs and the emotional support. Then we can align ourselves to our soul's truth and grounding in this truth uh, and alignment, becoming aligned with this newfound truth that we are resonating with going forward. So that's this energy I see. It's taking the culmination from the past two years and really helping us become more stable in ourselves, in our new way of seeing ourselves and life in general and being able to embody that and really feel much more at home within ourselves. The full moon is also, uh, well, let me see where did I want to go into the Scorpio. Yeah, I want to go into the Scorpio notes that I took back in uh, 2020. And I just, going through all of my books and, and things, I found this really interesting because we are also, oh, no, I'll keep going with these because it's when I start talking about Venus squaring the lunar nodes, which south node is in Scorpio. So I'm going to keep going. Sorry, disorganized today. <laughs> the full moon is opposing Mercury in retrograde. Ah! Mercury won't be in retrograde for much longer, but that's in Capricorn. While the sun is in conjunction to Mercury and it, um, it is in within one degree of the sun, which is called a Kazemi. When a planet goes Kazemi, it means that it is moving through the heart of the sun and the sun represents self, I, me. Um, Mercury, our minds, our thoughts. So we're really getting a good idea here of what's going on in, in, with inside of us. This energy is positive. It's the purification of the mind. You can also receive some new ideas, new inspirations to grow into over the next four month Mercury cycle. Mercury goes retrograde because it's too far away from the sun the core of our being, who we truly are, what's important to us. So Mercury, the mind, must come back, review, realign our minds, our thoughts to our sun, our core being. So it's interesting how the energy and the planets are really, I mean, it's always this way, a harmony, a symphony of, of energy. Um, Mercury is our thoughts. It's what we communicate. It's how we take in information. When it's retrograde, retrograde we typically review, reevaluate, readjust, rethink. It's a lot of the re's. Um, rethink things before we move forward. So when Mercury meets up with the sun, which is our core being or our, our identity, we get a bright light shining on us, giving us a, a lot of insights, a lot of big, deep insights on how we think, what we think about ourselves um, and our core values, especially uh, during a full moon. When the, the moon is brightest as well, that's an extra spotlight on this energy here. It's a significant illumination. It, uh, how to adjust our thinking and communication about ourselves to align with our emotional needs, which is Cancer Moon. Not only getting insights, this powerful energy might help us take some action on what to do about the new insights we receive to create great change in our lives. So when you um, label yourself or, you know, when you've always been told you're this or you're a certain way or all that and you believe it, even though it's not coming from you, it may have come from your parents or your, you know, whatever, society, whoever. Um, and we start to believe it and we kind of embody that in a way. It becomes a very big distortion of who we are. 
So this energy is really trying to course correct a lot of that, especially in the mind. Um, with, both Mer Mer bleh bleh, with both Mercury and Mars in retrograde, we may be feeling restless um, because we have these big desires to take some action in making this change right now. Um, allow yourself to slow down through this energy and really attune to the new insights that you're getting, the new realizations that you're getting. Um, surrender the areas of your life that may be restlessly trying to, maybe you might be trying to control because you have this restless energy in you. This will allow room for integration and um, the embodiment of a new sense of self, this newfound self that isn't so bad. You know, when you carry a lot of guilt and shame, when you've been told you're a certain way or blamed for things for, as a child growing, growing up, and you believe that, you carry that around with you, and um, you don't even realize that that's your, that's how you see yourself or you're talking to yourself. And it, it, it creates a lot of problems for people. So we want to create space for birthing something new for ourselves. And there's a lot of energetic support for this. So this full moon is also making a sextile to the north node in Taurus and Uranus in Taurus. And sextiles are positive. Um, they're beneficial aspects that require activation. So even though opportunities present themselves through the sextile, we still have to take action in order to activate um, the energy and its benefits. So Taurus is about understanding our needs and our values. Um, what brings us a sense of stability, security, and um, also what helps us with our self-confidence. The North Node um, is our progress forward. It's our destination, it's our future self. And Uranus is sudden unexpected events. So we may suddenly and unexpectedly start feeling better about ourselves and feeling better in our own skin and feeling more confident and feeling more sure about ourselves. Um, and what we're realizing and working through. <clears throat> Let's see. The full moon is also making a square to Chiron, who is an Aries still. And Chiron is the wounded healer. Um, this is a more difficult energy. Squares are typically challenging aspects and Chiron is our deep core wounds and our traumas from childhood on up. Chiron tends to bring up all of our fears, all of our insecurities and self-doubt. Aries, which is ruled by Mars, speaks all about our behaviors and our actions. So this energy may make some people hesitate on taking action towards the changes that are being highlighted by this moon due to fears. Fears due to not honoring the emotions before, not honoring your own emotions before in the past and realizing suddenly the behaviors, attitudes, and actions that were taken out of um, not honoring our, our emotions and maybe lashing out or judging or um, having strong opinions, gossip, all of these things that um, if we would have just um, dealt with our own feelings and had like a good emotional regulation <laughs> of some sort, maybe we, we wouldn't have acted a certain way. But this is just a, a self-realization, self-understanding. So, um, yeah, this energy, this fear might um, keep, have people hold back um, because of this, because of feeling when they were out of alignment, when they were unconscious, I remember going through all the guilt and shame of all of my unconscious acts in life. And you just can't continue to put yourself through that. You've got to um, forgive yourself and others. Um, yeah, the way we acted, the way we behaved out of alignment due to core values and um, 
out of alignment to the core values in the soul self. So also some may not fully be comfortable or familiar with um, caring about their own emotions and feelings and well-being um, in alignment to their soul self. It may really feel out of character and it might, it probably is. You had a, like a protector, an egoic protector protecting those sensitive emotions that still stay in us from childhood, from having all these unmet, unmet needs, um, emotional abandonment and neglect and all of those things. So anyway, we develop a lot of um, other parts within us that are being highlighted by this moon right now um, in these, you know, these within the past, week or two and into the next week or two um yeah there's probably for some have a difficult time moving ahead because there's guilt there's shame for having feelings and honoring the feelings and being vulnerable that could be really scary for some but um i want to point out the lunar nodes because now venus who which is in this energy is highlighting our relationships and also money, um, money transactions, um, is squaring the moon's nodes, the north and the south node of the moon. And the lunar nodes are our reference point of ego security. It's a process of moving from a personality that we identify with into exploring and identifying with a completely new identity. This is where the growth happens, awakening a new sense of self and how you understand yourself. So this is the uh, interaction that's going on right now with the north and south node of the moon and with Venus in a square here um, to the lunar nodes when any planet is squaring the lunar nodes this is highlighting skipped steps in evolutionary ast astrology it's highlighting skipped step or indicating some skipped skipped se steps i can't talk <laughs> um and in the past two weeks from now prior to this moon um a lot of a lot of you a lot of us um there's been a lot of deep emotional release with um, Venus was in a conjunction to Pluto. That is separating now, but it brought up a lot of deep emotional releasing, purging. Um, and from this new moon on, it will be a more fresh and exciting energy. So let it out, purge it out, cry it out. It's really important. Um So when a planet squares the lunar nodes, it can, it in, indicates skipped steps. So we're talking about Venus. When we have skipped steps, we either didn't do something um, or we only did a little bit of it instead of all of it. So, um, and this is steps in our evolutionary process of growth. Um, with Venus halfway on the square, halfway to the south node and halfway to the north node. Um, that's kind of that half in, half out of some form of transformation for, for some, not all. Um, the south node being the past, so halfway in the past, halfway in the future. We tend to get confused with this energy. So do we go back to the old familiar or do we go all in towards the new unfamiliar future? This is where some people can get caught in skipped steps, thinking they're going to the future, but still having a leg in the old familiar. That can cause some challenges for you. So, um, sometimes when we go 50-50, half in, half out, we hesitate, we delay what needs to be done in order to truly move forward into a new, evolved, better way of living. We must consciously choose one. And in this uh, Venus in Aquarius, Aquarius energy is all about breaking free from the old, um, from what's not aligned, what's not authentic to us, 
and moving into new, innovative, unique, authentic ways for ourselves. It's a conscious choice to break free from whatever is no longer feeling resonant, in alignment, um, emotionally right for you. It's no longer on your soul's path of evolution, basically. It's like the definition of insanity. Um, it's doing the same thing over and over again, the same old, going back to the same old thing over and over again, expecting a different result. It just doesn't work that way. So there is a resolution to skip, skip steps uh, to the lunar nodes. It's one of the two, uh, north or south node energy, um, usually works better to help make this conscious choice in which direction to go. In this case, it is the south node that will be working better for us. And because Venus has also touched on the south node more than the north node in the past couple of months, we'll have a lot more of this energy experienced. The south node is in Scorpio. Scorpio is about transformation. It is about change. It is about endings and beginnings. Venus and the south node in Scorpio has taught us all what we don't want to repeat or go back to. And I think many of you, many of us can agree. There's at least something pretty big, like, nope, not going back to do that again. Um, the resolving choice here is to end something, Scorpio. Um, and with Venus, it's, it's something within relationships or within finances or shared, um, shared, what's the word, you know, assets, thank you, <laughs> shared assets um, that just aren't working anymore. In order to find freedom, in order to grow and evolve. So now I will go back to my notes from 2020 on the Scorpio energy because this hits home. Um, and we are completing. So I'm, going, I'm reading from the beginning of the cycle of a lot of Scorpio energy from 2020 that we've gone through and we are coming to a completion point. A completion point. The South Node will still be in Scorpio for, you know, a little while longer. So, um... Scorpio is moving us into what we really intensely feel. What we might, might be picking up on that's hard to put into words. Energy is unspoken yet felt intensely under the surface. And the Scorpio energy is pulling these feelings to the surface as a rising sense of truth, emotional truth. Scorpio is an intense water sign full of emotion and its energy is all about transformation, experiencing something intense to get to the root of it and understand it in a deeper way, ultimately to embrace and love and accept it. There are typically, these are typically our darker shadow side, shadow aspects of ourselves, where our fears are. The parts of ourselves we haven't yet accepted. Areas of our lives we haven't quite yet understood. Scorpio gives us that drive to dig deeper into our psyche to understand these deeper unconscious aspects of ourselves. This Scorpio energy can transform these unaccepted shadow aspects of ourselves into a higher vantage point, a higher vibrational power for ourselves, just like the phoenix rising from the ashes and transforms whatever parts of ourselves we viewed as bad, scary, dark into our personal power and wisdom. This is transmutation, transmuting that energy into a positive perspective for our highest good and the highest good of all. We can actually help others with our new wisdom of ourselves, um, our past experiences and fears of what we always viewed as dark and negative, as it will be transformed into a positive energy that can be used for the good, both for ourselves and others. It will be needed. So this is where we're coming to a completion of that Scorpio energy from 2020. 
there's a refinement and maturity to this newly evolved energy. As we embark on our journey in life and get pulled into new emotional experiences, we are given a chance to master our own emotional processes. We are often triggered and required to do so by other people, usually those we are closest to. This is because Scorpio is also the energy of shared resources, shared value, shared possessions, and shared energy. How you merge with others is what you share with them. This can also be with in institutions as well. Financial, uh, an example, financial debt where a bank actually owns your possessions that you've borrowed money for. This is also Scorpio, mutual funds, gym memberships, anything you value that's a joint endeavor. endeavor. Scorpio also rules the energy that we've taken on from other people. This is important. Emotional, spiritual, energetic, both healthy and unhealthy. We may feel a sense of personal power in a healthy relationship and also experience the opposite end of the spectrum in unhealthy relationships by way of abuse, what's hidden behind closed doors, whatever has happened to you that's unhealthy for you. That's extremely, in, whatever's extremely intense, scary, emotionally damaging to you. Scorpio can and will transform whatever challenging traumatic experiences we've had into a healthy healing perspective once we've transformed into our higher consciousness and embodied that. The Scorpio energy is extremely intense and it involves how we share this energy with each other, how we maintain our own sovereign power, sense of self, while engaging in, a health, in healthy dynamics and healthy relationships with others. This also gives way to healthy vulnerability and healthy intimacy. Scorpio is where we end, we, Scorpio is where we open up to these brutal truths of ourselves, our fears, our experiences, and what we've been through. This energy can be very powerful in transforming shame, guilt, and any other parts of ourselves that we need to process, nurture, forgive. This is a part of the healing journey that we're embarking on, that, we've, and that we have embarked on since 2020. So um, going back to just a few more transits. So we're at 30 minutes now. Um, Mars, still retrograde, is going direct suit, is also in a trine to Venus, who's squaring the nodes. So this energy is meant to help with the follow through, the, the forward momentum. Mars is our life force energy, our drive to take action towards what's unhealthy, evolving for us. My, my heater is making a strange sound, I'm sorry. <laughs> what's healthy and evolving for us. Mars in Gemini, ruled by Mercury, um, is about the mind, our communication, about duality and connection. So continuing to follow through and honoring our emotions will ease a lot of the tension and problems going forward. If we remain half in the new and half in the old, half in the new ways, half in the old ways, we send mixed messages. Um, out to the universe, to each other, which can really create new problems for us down the line. Um, the Sabian symbol for this full moon is a germ grows into knowledge and life. I'm going to read from Inside Degrees, but I found just the title of that interesting. Growth, with knowledge, wisdom, bravery, expansion, and awareness is the opportunities gifted to us all at this time. Growth is in the very cellular code of every living thing here on earth. All things have an innate desire and ability to grow, and it is inevitable that there will be growth for us all as we leave the past behind us 
and move forward into 2023. So I'm going to finish this up with reading from Inside Degrees um, for 16 Degrees of Cancer for this moon tonight. Because I found it very in alignment. Um, the skull carved out of quartz crystal, magnificent aplomb, knowing how to do it right, ingrained with staggering soul memory, the lineage taken further, attainments in other lives, grant in this one, carte blanche, to do what is in one to do, be what is in one to be. Offering the world sparkling gifts, effortless presence and composure, authoritative stance. You can go as far as you are motivated to, no limits. At the heart of the mystery is the rare quality of simultaneous awareness and attunement upon multiple frequencies, which can become the mediating call to bring heavens and earth into union or to allow any given frequency to link up with any other so that the ancient visions are fulfilled and the world opens up right on time at the crossing point held absolutely intact. So that is um, what I have for this full moon in Cancer Energy. And uh, I hope that it was helpful for some of you and all of you. I know that I have been witnessing and it, um, I've even seen through some of the social media um, people going through some deep emotional purging and uh, challenges at this time. And so I, I really hope that we can evolve and grow out of these patterns and old ways. Uh, and we all have are given this opportunity and we have great supportive energy now to um, usher us forward at this point from where we were in 2020 where we really felt like we were doing something new now we are given the self-confidence the empowerment the grounding foundation within the knowledge of who we really are and who we felt, thought we were or who we were telling ourselves we were, playing it small. And I'm saying don't hold back, you know, let go of the past, let go of needing to control and really see, see where this energy can take you. Follow how you feel. Much love to you all. Bye.